All right, so uh, let's take a look at the foxing panel here. Um, now we can't actually see it right now because it's actually kind of buried under the inner shell, but uh, I'm not gonna worry too much about that. Let's go back to the, uh, turn that back on again. So what I will do is just go over to my polygons with the foxing uh, item highlighted there and go to the deform push tool and I'm just gonna push this out a little bit. Grab that handle, push it out away so I can see it outside of the uh, inner shell. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and right click and duplicate this just in case I need to have a backup copy. Throw that in the backups, and there we go. All right, so back on this foxing. Now what we wanna do, I'm gonna turn this off, hide this for a second, and go to my inner shell. If you notice, this foxing panel has these kind of ribbing, horizontal ribbing uh, going across it, which is kind of like this accordion effect. And we wanna to try to model that into the panel as we thicken it actually. So yeah, that's going to be how we're going to thicken this uh, object. So let's take a look at it real quick. We notice that the edges are look pretty even for the most part. And that's what we want. We want to have these edges really even. And if they're not, when you bevel these edges, it's going to make any unevenness, and by unevenness, I mean spacing between each of these edges. It's gonna make that spacing a little more pronounced if it's not, if they're not evenly spaced. Um, so what I wanna make sure is that they are absolutely uh, spaced evenly. And we can go in and select each edge and hit the S key and slide it up and down and uh, make sure that we kind of eyeball that. And uh, you know, and that's that's going to be a lot of work, and you're probably not going to get it right. So one of the best ways to do is just simply rebuild this thing. And I'm going to select all those, hit the L key, hit delete, get rid of them. Now you'll notice right off the bat, we've retained the curvature contour in the top-down view, but we've lost the curvature contour in the in the side or profile view. But that's not a big deal. We can get that back really easily. So I'm going to go ahead now and just turn off the inner shell. I'm going to turn off the saddle for right now. And what we want to do is we want to get these horizontal lines, edges back, but they need to be perfectly evenly spaced. So how do we do that? So, well, we have a cool tool called Loop Slice. Now, we c there's no way we can really, I mean, I suppose we could go in and add edge loops to the whole thing and keep them set split in the middle. That would work, but that's a lot more work than I want to do on this. On this. I, I, want, I want it to be easy. So I'll just go over to the uh, edit toolbox here, uh, but I want to select two polygons. And the reason I select a couple of adjacent polygons here is so that it knows what direction I want the slice to go. So I want the slices to go horizontally. So select two adjacent polygons like that. Go to loop slice and look immediately it it activates and this is one of those tools where you don't really have to click in the viewport to activate it it just does uh, when you click the button so uh, bring up the panel here we can see this little gizmo at the top and you can adjust the size here by clicking that little dot there and you can adjust where that that edge is going to fall Right now it's at 50%, we can drag that. Also, you can just click anywhere in the viewport and, and just move your mouse left and right and that will also adjust that. So, uh, but what I need is I need this mode to be set to uniform. So that's gonna lock that, the spacing of however many edges I wanna put in here. Now, where it says count, I'm gonna put 10 and it's gonna automatically make 10 slices perfectly even slices for me. And then I'm looking at this and I think I want maybe a few more. I'm gonna go with 13. I think that'll work. I know that'll work because I already did it. All right, so now I'm going to deselect my edges. Now remember, <clears throat> I said that we've kind of lost that uh, contouring of the, of the shoe with this. So the best way to get that back is to go back into our topology tools, right? Now, I'm not gonna sit there and, and nudge every one of these edges and vertices 
to adhere back to this shoe again, I'm going to do something a lot cooler. First thing I'm going to do is make sure that it sits outside of the shoe. Go to the um, deform, go to my push. I'm going to just push it out a little bit more. You can see it sits outside of that shoe form now. Great. So I'm going to jump over to the topology toolbox here and I'm going to go over to smooth. All right. Make sure nothing here is selected. It's in one iteration. Everything's good. Click in the viewport. Boom. That's it. That's all we had to do to get that curve back. Now you'll see it's just a little bit inside of the, of the shoe form, but all I need to do is go back over here and we'll go to the uh, push tool, one of our favorite tools and just push that out. There we go. Just going to, Click and drag. Yeah. Now let's look at what the, uh, what is it? The uh, saddle looks like with it. And that's pretty good. Now here comes the fun part. Let's get that accordion look going. Let's go here, here. And I'm just selecting every other edge. And you can also just uh, hit the up arrow key and Moto will remember your selections. Actually, I think I might have messed up here. Hang on. Um, turn off the saddle. Yes, I did. I want to start here, here, and then just use the up arrow key to continue that selection. Hit the L key. Now I want to do a push, but I want to do a push with a fall off this time. Okay. The reason why is I want this part of it, uh, this part of the accordion to be more pronounced than this part of that accordion. I want these these to push out farther than, than this area here. So I'm going to select a linear fall off and let's move that out of the way. Um, let's just click in the viewport to get that, that active. If you like, I can search the web for. Okay. So Siri just kicked in because it heard me say something. <sighs> what do we do with artificial intelligence? I don't know. No. Okay. Um, let me go to my top view and there we are. I'm just lining this up a little bit better. Go back to my perspective view and let's just rock and roll here. Click and drag my push tool. There we go. And just bring that out to your liking. I'm liking that. Maybe bring it in just a little bit. There we go. That's it. So I'm going to turn off the linear uh, fall off there. Now you'll see that there are some things that we're going to have to match up uh, later on if I turn on the uh, saddle. And before we actually add the stitches, we're going to make sure that our all of our panels are going to meet up with one another. So we'll probably be going in with the uh, element move tool and just just nudge these things around a little bit, uh, make sure that things fit together nicely. And uh, you don't have to do that now, but we will. I'll do a video on that just before we actually start doing the stitching. All right, so that should be the foxing.